said, good evening, uh, European time. <laughs> uh, I will give a short introduction, then the uh, Urbania, BD and Priyasen will give their talk and present their work. And uh, there is a possibility of a discussion also with you. Uh, and you're invited to write your questions in the chat. Then we can summarize it because we don't have uh, very good experience with everybody talking because it can become a mess and everybody's interrupting everybody. Okay, uh, Bani Abidi. Uh, a Berlin-based artist from Karachi and Priya Sen, a filmmaker based in New Delhi, uh, are collaborators uh, since a long time. And they give a, a conversation now about their individual practices with moving image and sound. Bani Abidi uh, is an artist working with video, photography and drawing. She is known for her use of humor as a way of negotiating realities that are often hard. Her last exhibitions were under others, They Died Laughing in the Gruppiusbau in Berlin, an ex exhibition which was very impressive to me. I saw it last year. And there was also last year an exhibition at, in Shasha at the Shasha Art Foundation called Funland. He was also participating in many um, group shows, under others the 2012 documenta 13. And the video which was presented there is now shown at Experimenta in India. And you can also see it online if you want. Uh, Priya Sen is a New Delhi based filmmaker and artist who works across film, video, sound and installation. She's interested in the potential of realist documentary, but as a productively diff oh, defamiliarizing enterprise. Her films were presented at the, f I, I'm not sure if I pronounce it uh, correctly, Flaherty Seminar 2019, among other festivals and venues that include the Kitchen New York City BFI London Film Festival Berlinale and the Outfest Los Angeles. Um, Banya Bide and Priya Sen, I would ask you now for your presentation. Thank you, Hildegorn. Um, this is very exciting. I should begin by saying that the, uh, one of the uh, strange uh, coincidences and the um, result of teaching online is that Priya and I are being able to do this together because she's in Delhi and I'm in Berlin and there was no, there was no way to, for us to travel. And uh, it's pretty magical to be doing this, sitting in two different cities. Um, and I'll just speak a bit about our history. Um, I used to live in India for four years um, and it was a very unusual circumstance. I was married to an Indian and had the um, uh, luxury to actually live across the border. And as everyone, uh, who's attending would probably know that Pakistan and India are, are perpetually at war with each other and um, have uh, spent a lot of time identifying themselves in opposition to each other. Um, so to have first-hand experience of having lived in India um, was a very important uh, part of my life. And Priya and I got to know each other um, at that point. And we started working together. I would film and Priya works a lot with sound and would, has always been doing uh, my, all the sound designing for my films and also a lot of my edits. Um, and um, one of the more uh, interesting moments of these collaborations were uh, when Priya came across to Karachi. And I always say that, you know, when an Indian comes to Pakistan or Pakistani goes to India, that is the only moment that completely um, removes any concept of the other because it's the most familiarizing process. So Priya came and recorded um, films, um, uh, recorded sound for a film of mine and she goes back and we're having this whole discussion and we wanted her to come back and there was some sound she didn't have. And we actually stepped in and she, there was a sound of an ambulance one day and she said, well, I'm just gonna use the sound that I have from Delhi. And, um, and that was a really sweet moment of a Delhi sound filling in for a movie that was um, shot, a film that was shot in Karachi. And since then, we've always thought about how, if we were to uh, make an archive of sounds of cities um, and how can those be used 
um, as a way of uh, an equalizer um, and a familiarizer for people living in South Asia. Um, both of us work, um, I'm, a, I, I'm very much, I come from a, uh, an art background. Um, I did sculpture and painting, never studied filmmaking and Priya comes from a very solid filmmaking background. Uh, but I think both of us uh, draw our inspiration and our strength and we just live through um, uh, the cities that we've lived in, me, Karachi and Priya and Delhi. And I'm just gonna read out something I was go earlier going through an interview of Priya's um, and she describes it really well, better than I would be able to. So I'm gonna read out a little thing she says. Um, the city of Delhi, it is a big motivator. The fraughtness, the segregations, the breakdown of systems, the human excesses, the extremes, the constant fight and what lies beneath. Also the inequity, the humor, the resilience, the weather, the pollution, the lack of explanation, the activism, the hall of mirrors to power, the wealth, the abjection, the refusal to stop and the will to continue. I am not motivated by passivity or calmness. I have no idea what to do with it, but to bring it in contact with something less settled. Uh, with the idea that there are only untethered uh, realities and vagabond truths. Um, and that really beautifully mirrors uh, my feelings about uh, the importance that uh, an environment or a city holds to uh, my practice as well. Um, and the way we're going to do it, I just wanted to start with this introduction and Priya will do uh, 20 minutes of and uh, present her very particular way of making films and then I will do it after that and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, so Priya, do you want to just uh, do you want to take over? Thank you. Thank you, Bani. Thank you, Samaka. Uh, hello. Um, so one of the ways that Bani continues to be uh, in my space is through this uh, picture behind me, uh, Naila. <laughs> that came from her studio to mine, as well as other things. Uh, and it was actually quite um, a change in my life when she left Delhi. And since then, uh, it's been, but you know, in, uh, somehow our collaborations have become deeper. We've started calling them collaborations earlier, it was just, and, and, and including the friendship, actually. Um, so I think that kind of forms um, the ease with which we can actually continue our work. Um, so in addition to this ambulance sound that was, uh, that, that is from Delhi, very particularly in, in, a, in a video from Pakistan and from Karachi, uh, also there are other sounds of uh, a tomb uh, in the city that has found its way into a, another tomb in the other city. So there have been all these connections and we, I hope to keep that going. Uh, but just to give an idea of uh, it's a bit, uh, I'm trying to, you know, I, just to give, an, give you an idea of how I work. It's actually, um, I've been, so I, I, I do many things. I've always done a few things. Uh, one of the things that I have done is uh, editing and sound design. I have uh, started from film. I went to film school, I, but I also knew very, I also knew that I didn't want to make narrative film. I also knew that I was uh, motivated by sort of experimental film and sort of non narrative film, not, not necessarily experimental film, but non-fiction, because I find that um, somehow you can't really, uh, I mean, the things that you actually witness in life are to me impossible to replicate, which is something I've always marveled at how, you know, at Barney, in Barney's work, where she manages to actually take away that, uh, you know, that thought that wall between you know, fiction and reality, which I just cannot do. So I just find, so for me, it's not the idea of giving shape to like something that is formless, like a formless world, but to actually sort of um, heighten the patterns through which uh, it moves and through which people resist and through uh, the ways people continue their lives. And to me, that becomes an extremely cinematic kind of experience. So um, I'm just going to start with this film that I made actually quite a long time ago. Um, but it, the, two, the two films I'm going to show are in very specific neighborhoods in which I have had a long history of working. And I really feel that you know, a relationship with place 
is really essential to what I do. I can't think of actually just entering a space and, you know, in which I don't really have some kind of uh, sort of deep connection to, but that's changing now because the one thing that we can't do is actually spend time in place, it's places and spend time with people. So uh, the first film actually um, is called Noon Day Dispensary. I'll just talk about it a little bit before I show you a small clip. Uh, it's actually very difficult to show this film, uh, a small clip of this film, because it's actually a 27 minute single shot. And, um, you know, the whole point is to watch 27 minutes of it, uh, because the whole point of it is that something unfolds. Um, and what I try and do is produce what, in my mind, is a cinematic gesture. So, I mean, so whenever I, I actually encounter um, whatever it is that I'm drawn towards, the idea is to produce some form, you know, to give it a kind of formal idea, but not very, uh, but it happens, I mean, of course it doesn't happen so consciously, but then I, I remember going into the space, uh, which is basically a, a clinic, at, uh, you know, in a resettlement colony, it's a very specific kind of uh, place in Delhi where people who are evicted from, you know, where, so Delhi moves through erasure and um, people are periodically evicted from their homes and taken to other places. I won't get into that, but this is a government run clinic uh, in one of these resettlement colonies. And I happened to be there on a certain day because I was doing a project there. And um, I was called into this clinic to witness a fight. Um, and to, to witness um, a doctor being extremely, extremely uh, terrible with the people who were there. So, um, of course, I didn't know what I was going to do and what I, what I, what I happened to do, because I'm also very, my, my work, I, 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 I sort of like, uh, cinema verite has always been a very compelling way of being in places. And so I try and sort of work with some, you know, something, something clicks in place and I, and I start with those kinds of things. So I'm just going to show you a little, otherwise I'll just keep talking. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a small clip, uh, you know, that showed you the ent entry, the entrance, the entry to the space. But like I said, it doesn't make sense un unless you watch 27 minutes. And it's also really an anti-image. It's like, you can't really see. Anyway, um, I will show it to you. So this is going to take me a little while. Um, I'm 
subtitling it uh, which was and I decided to keep every single line uh, because there's just an accumulation it's like a cacophony and it's an accumulation um, that happens and by the time we get to 27 minutes something just sort of happens so anyway since you can't see that uh, but um, but I, I mean I, I enjoy being in situations where really there's quite a lot of noise and I mean it's just the city um, you know it's 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 um, there's nothing there's nothing there's nothing calm about it uh, there's nothing really uh, still and I really enjoy that so I'm going to move to the next um, yeah I'm just move, move to the next film which is a very much more recent film but that took two and a half years to make so you know um, and I and and I had a very very different trajectory um, very very different way of being but the idea of I was equally interested in this idea of presence and um, what presence does and how you can actually uh, work with it or how it, how it works with you within, within frames. Um, one of the things that I think I have learned is this idea of, you know, is a practice of listening, which is, uh, which I bring to most of what I do, um, which is again, something that takes, it takes time and takes time to actually understand for oneself and, um, you know, and then it, it can become quite transformative. But um, so the next film uh, is called Ye Freedom Life. Uh, it is my first feature, feature length documentary. And really the first most 
you know, the first film that I haven't shot entirely by myself. And um, also I was interested in this idea of an egalitarian film form. You know, it's like what happens when film can just travel across uh, context, across language, across space, you know, and like, I'm just like, oh, I would love for just many people to watch my films. And like, why don't I try and make one instead of making films that no one will see, you know? Um, so uh, that was a very, very nice shift to make where, so this film has in fact traveled. I think uh, this form of like, what makes something accessible, uh, not necessarily populist or anything like that, but like keeping ideas of, um, keeping your ideas sort of there and taking into, take into consideration uh, many multiple things. Uh, again, I'm not making myself clear. Uh, so this film was actually uh, about love and sort of the uncertainties of it. And it was shot uh, again in another neighborhood where I have a very deep connection and it was with women and it was this entirely different con constituency of queer, um, sort of non-normative uh, love in Delhi, uh, which doesn't call itself by any, doesn't give itself a name, but it's a full scene. Uh, it's all these women who are working at night and it's women who, who are in love with other women, who um, hang out with other women, who marry other women, they dream of marrying other women, you know, so it's just like, um, and, I, and, I, and I actually edited it like fiction almost, somehow, it just became, it, 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 it became very different from uh, the way in which I would otherwise edit. So I'm just going to again show you two spaces, um, one the, you know, for each of the, the protagonists, one who works in a very, very crowded outdoor cigarette shop in the middle of the night. And again, there's this thing that they're leaving really unsafe and women not being able to go out, whatever. But there are all these women who are working, at least over there. Um, we hung out for many months together. The other space is a beauty parlor. Again, beautiful, intimate, well, not a private space, but an intimate one where there was this weave of, uh, women's conversations, and it was just actually wonderful to film, film there. Uh, so I'm just going to show you uh, a small, small bit of, bit of both these. And just tell me how much time I have, Bali. I mean, I'm not sure how. It's 6.25, so maybe another 10, five, five minutes. I'll just show this clip and then we can. Yeah.
like in these uh, small bits um i tried to choose a, a section that had both these scenarios but i'm not again it's just um i'm not sure how much how, how it works so when you um, hopefully you can share post next time it's screening somewhere so people can get a it's not online anywhere is it no it's going to be on the 20th so. it's going to go online 
on the frontier. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think maybe I think Sa maybe Sal the academy can share it with the audience. Uh, okay, I think I'll leave it at that. I'm not really sure what to say. We can uh, maybe. I think after that, I'll try and wrap up quickly so that we have some time for uh, uh, a conversation. So. Um, um, I will begin showing my work and it's interesting to notice I was watching this, I've seen Priya's films and I think the major difference would be that I, in that scenario, I would just be a person without a camera, kind of just standing there staring and observing everything, but uh, just happening to be there. Uh, but you kind of make these situations happen where you spend a lot more time, especially in the second film, you spent a lot of time in all of these neighborhoods, which meant a lot of uh, things that were shot and not used and getting to know these people. I mean, I know about your relationships with all the characters now. So it was a very in massive time uh, investment. And, uh, and I was joking earlier with Priya, saying that I kind of also wanted to do a documentary, but then I felt really lazy. So I just remembered all the things that I um, liked, moments that I was interested in in the city. And then I just put, I just put them all together. I staged them. And my work just looked like documentary in any case. So who could have told? So I, uh, to prove that point, I'll show my first uh, film. It's now quite, it's two th from 2006. The first time I really storyboarded and uh, um, sort of assembled a moment um, in a city. And uh, the nature of the, fi the film is basically, um, I think people have seen it before, but it's about a, a VIP or a sort of st a state guest uh, who's about to arrive in the city and the city has been crippled. So there are people waiting for him and his car to drive by in order to get on. Um, and um, it's not, it's nine minutes long. I'm gonna just show uh, four minutes, uh, but there's no protagonist, there's no dialogue. They're just scenes um, of things and uh, of moments, um, but everything has been um, they're all the details um, of waiting that I was interested in, that I will, um, I shared, I use this as a platform. Um, okay. So I work a lot with detail and uh, the things that draw me into making films are, uh, uh, are, are more about the detail. So the men in the film that you saw with the big badges on, I was more interested in the badges of what happens when people put, men put this on their, these on their chest and suddenly their chest swell and there's a sense of uh, power and importance. Um, the entire traffic jam where the traffic is halted there were little details in it that were storyboarded and pre-planned, which is the, you know, uh, the guy that you'd see, the, a guy picks his ear, 
um, the interaction between all the people. So it was almost a year um, um, realizing the uh, full moment of being uh, amongst citizens that I brought together more. Children in the movie were all just it was summer holidays, so they were all gathered up from one place. So I brought the book and some shoes for them and everything. And it was actually the easiest thing to do. I had to wait and they were so bored uh, during uh, waiting for the while the shoot was happening that the way uh, they act out, act out, uh, I my um, Um, so I'm going to actually move on um, to the next film, but this is um, just to say that a lot of my preoccupation is with uh, civil society, and I'm not uh, I'm not a, at all a, a very patriotic person, but I'm really interested in in people, in my people, uh, kind of. So uh, what what uh, plays out in the lives of people I live with, I'm kind of intrigued by that, and more so. Um, and the confrontation with the state. And mm -hmm. I find that a lot of my ends, um, work ends up being um, a kind of a mockery of um, uh, masculine prowess or, or the state, which is usually masculine. And um, so the next film, I'll show a bit of uh, an excerpt from his death at a 30 degree angle, which is a film that showed at uh, Documenta. It was commissioned by the, it was commissioned by the uh, Sharjah Art Foundation. And it's, um, it's, project, it's two vertical films shot on really tall, three meter high uh, pieces of, um, of, of plywood. Um, and I'm just showing you an excerpt. Um, the film was at, shot in an actual um, atelier of an old 84 year old gentleman, Ram Sutar, who makes political statuary for, in India. 
So he's been doing that um, since his 20s. So his studio is littered with broken Indra Gandhis and Nehru's falling apart. And so it's an entire pantheon of um, Indian politics in his studio. But I um, um, took my fictional character, who is a politician, um, who's trying to get a statue made of himself, which in these times, of course, is very interesting also, again, he tries to get a uh, uh, um, statue made of himself and can't decide how he wants to uh, be represented. And here, one of his cronies is waiting for him to arrive. where my uh, character is very long term. Between the influence of the rest of the, um, of the studio, there's just him trying to take on the people that are trying to get into the edge of the 
Um, I'm really proud of the and so just uh, um, uh, uh, Hildegun, um, uh, Karen, how much time do we have if we carry, can we carry over beyond, uh, beyond seven? Uh, yes, for sure. Okay, so I can, I can, I do have time to um, show my other film. Um, so this one was very fictional and very, very stylized, um, but yet there was a documentary aspect of the entire um, studio of this man, and it was an interaction between this fictional character and the sculptor. Um, but of course, it's very, uh, it's very subtle in its uh, comic aspect. Um, um, and the next one I would show is similarly deals with a moment uh, where the state attempts to do something um, which is very far-fetched and I read about it in the news and I made a film uh, which was my own reading of the situation. And I'm also going to show just four minutes of it. I'm getting the whole view. Okay, this, this is stock. Um, yeah, so the all, all three um, all three films are, um, are pre-scripted and um, and completely designed. A lot of uh, what the what the main the interesting thing for me um, at this point is that it's um, and what became evident in my uh, Gopis Bao show also very pleasantly that it was, there was a question that, you know, is this work about Pakistan, which I always get asked. 
And it was also very well received in Germany as um, something that is uh, that has sort of themes uh, which different people relate to or context. And I um, and I'm trying to talk about the fact that both Priya and I make work which is very rooted in particular spaces. But um, and what does it mean to show it outside? And I would just say that living in Berlin now, that the relationship with the city is really crucial because it's a guttural and intuitive um, relationship. And it's not about, it's about a country or about a, a particular history. It is um, that these cities are our grammar and our language, and we see life through these cities, as do people in other parts of the world. And so um, I always really find it fascinating that a film made in France, a romance set in, in Paris, for instance, is not a film about France, uh, but it's a film. It's a film. So it's about, you know, which becomes a normative and which becomes a cultural representation. Um, so of course, what, what I'm saying is in Germany, it was very, very well received as um, you know, just for the things um, that it, um, speaks about um and i think i'm not sure how much time we i think it would be nice to take questions it is uh 6 54. so um karen um we we can start uh talking or um more um from with the audience I'm aware that this is like fitting two filmmakers who have to snip up their films into one hour is hard, but there's a sense that we've, gi we've given quite a bit of stuff, so. Um. Okay, well, the, the first question uh, sample that I got into the chat uh, seems to be a technical one. Uh, you get asked if you work with a DOP. I do work with the DOP, not always. Um, now recently I don't, I get very flustered with, I've worked with big teams three times and I'm a mess on the set. So I'm just not trained for any of this. So I run around and I don't know who to tell what. So I've now bought a smaller camera and I choose to do a lot more stuff by myself. And therefore it also becomes much more smaller in its scope. But yes, I've always worked with uh, DOPs. Yeah, so that was the, the uh, first question that got to me in the chat. I tried to um, motivate the participants um, to ask some more questions. I don't know, uh, Hildegund, do you want to uh, ask a question? You know a bit more of um, Bani and Priya's work. Maybe there is some um, aspect that you want to highlight? <laughs> no, no, I don't want to highlight anything. But I want to ask my own questions. Thank you very much, first of all. It was very inspiring for me, although I knew some of the works already, but you always uh, watch it differently. I would like to ask a question about the audience. Um, and connecting to what you said uh, in the end, Barney, also. Um, what is, uh, how, no, I put it another way. Uh, do you imagine an audience uh, when you make the film? And mm. what is the difference between the audiences? Yeah, uh, wh Wherever you show it, that's the first question. And the second is, is it, I mean, of course it is important, I would say, whether it's shown in a cinema or in a movie festival or it's shown in an exhibition. Mm. When I saw your exhibition, Barney, you are often showing uh, your work in exhibition. Yeah, it's and it's also uh, very important how you display it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then you can also see in the same room drawings, for example, when you turn around, you see some drawings. So uh, the difference is, of course, that uh, in an exhibition, people go in and out. Uh, yeah, but what, how, what importance has the space where it's shown and the people where they come from or which also culture background, but also educational background, etc. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that when I make the films, uh, um, and uh, I think Priya can sort of uh, join in this uh, question, but uh, when I make the films, it's definitely people who I, um, I assume that they know everything I'm talking about. Um, so, so therefore, there's no um, uh, there's no onus on me to explain anyone anything. Um, so therefore, I do it at the level that I want to do it. I'm not going to explain anything uh, or make it easy for anyone. So, and it's abstract enough. And the works that I'm dealing with are form. The form and the abstraction 
um, it makes it translatable to wide enough audiences. But it's definitely, I assume, shared history, shared humor, everything. So that's a very abstract audience. The second question I always show in um, exhibition spaces, and I think I, uh, somebody asked me in my class this morning why I use two screens, and I said it's because I never learned how to make film traditionally, so I always thought of multiple space things, and I always, it's almost like a crutch where I'd use one screen and another, um, because I think it's automatic to relate two images to one another. Um, and that would go, uh, for especially with the way I assembled my exhibition here, it's um, uh, everything kind of relates and reflects off of each other. So it's important to um, experience everything um, together at the same time for it to feel the richness and diversity of moments I've visited uh, same subjects. Um, and Priya, what, you can answer the audience question. Uh, yeah, I mean, and also, I mean, my films don't show in exhibitions because I, I don't want them to necessarily. Um, but um, I actually, that, that I, I mentioned that I was interested in making these, uh, making more egalitarian film form, which means I also assume that it is going to be watched by many, many, many different people. And actually the, the last film has been, and it's been very, very interesting uh, because it's kind of shown in different places in different countries and um, very, very different audience. My, the, the audience that I was most scared of showing to was the, um, was the queer audience in Delhi <laughs> because they uh, don't let anything go and they ask the very difficult questions. Um, and uh, so, of course, there are some audiences I'm more scared of, or like, <laughs> queer audience was a little bit frightening. But anyway, got through that. But yeah, otherwise, it's been actually very interesting to have my, uh, to, to show in theatres. And this film has actually shown in, in many, many different kinds of theatres, which is kind of uh, really, really nice for me. Um, but yeah, so I don't actually show, I'm the opposite. Like I don't show, I haven't, I, I'm very, very nervous about doing multiple screens. I have no idea how to actually, um, I try, I don't think it works. So I think, uh, and also, so, so for me, the singular narrative is the thing that I, that I, is my work. Um, I can't split it up. I try sometimes. Um, I've done it for other people. But I think that's one, another thing I would ask of both of us, I think it's interesting, uh, uh, is the idea of being witnesses. And uh, I mean, I often equated with that thing of which I was saying this morning was whether well, sitting at a bus stop and just viewing things. And I think that unless, uh, so I think both our practices are, yeah, deeply linked to location. And, uh, and you, are, uh, you are suffering that kind of relationship with the city right now because you're stuck at home and you can't leave. Now, although now you've started leaving and going out. Um, and I am stuck in a different way. I've been in Berlin for a long time, but my, my ability to read the city is very compromised. So I can find things interesting, but I can't immediately feel that I can, uh, um, yeah, digest them fully. No, I am actually filming now, which is, uh, it's a whole other thing. I mean, all the things that you take for granted. Lockdown, are, lockdown filming. Not, not, no, I don't, I, I feel like I've, taken all of those words out of my vocabulary, pandemic, lockdown. I mean, those are the constraints, we all know that. But uh, through that, uh, there's a different kind of navigation, different kind of image actually, which is very interesting to see. Some more Are questions? Sorry. No, I'm yeah. just... Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, Ailey, welcome. Can you see me? No, you yes. Can, you can see me and hear me. Oh, hi, Ailey. Hi, hi. <laughs> I didn't know if I had joined you uh, with my body. With my soul, I was there already. <laughs> I'm sorry, I joined a little bit later your talk. It took a little bit longer with our, our thing today, and, uh, but I knew it was going to be recorded, so I knew that I can uh, pick the missing parts. Um, I'm so excited to, 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 to join at least for, for the last uh, 15 minutes I was in, or 20, let's say. And I was so um, interested about what you just said about the work of Vidya. 
yourself like this this idea of looking from the bus stop like or sitting on the bus stop because i was luckily uh, i was lucky enough to see your exhibition in um in gropius pau they did they die laughing and i was really very very amazed because uh, when we talk about multi channel and this sort of display the can the, the, sometimes it can something happen that becomes not megalomanic but it becomes an expression of a multitude that it might somehow um, become overwhelming as a viewer. And I remember I spent many hours in your show uh, because there is a sense of horizontality in a sense of also, there's something in the way you look at situations and people that for me already differs from a lot of what we would call an ethnographer's gaze anyway, but it also doesn't have this attempt to be voyeuristic either. And at the same time, there is something about the display that really as a viewer, um, made me aware of my autonomous possibilities of, of making the links and connecting anything that I wanted to. So I felt incredibly free in the narration uh, and, and I felt maybe, but maybe it's something I'm imagining, so forgive me for that, you know, but I, I had the feeling that I can connect even more to your message because you let me the freedom of, of, of making my own mind and autonomously building one screen to the other and one story to the other. So I was just wondering, I don't know if this is a question at all, but like, I was wondering how you go, how you go into the image making yourself, uh, working with DOPs or not. And, and forgive me if you said it already, but I miss half of the talk. Yeah, I mean, the exhibition was also designed very consciously in a way that there was no didactic text uh, on the walls. And I think that was something, especially being a, a, a Pakistani showing in Germany, I was like, there's no way I'm doing any explanation. So I think that was very freeing. And uh, I think the audience actually felt much more relaxed because they, they could just wander in that way. Um, and my image making, um, at, like I was saying earlier, the, all, the, um, um, all the films except for uh, the big installation of multiple channels that you saw in the last room, um, all the films are scripted, uh, really deeply sc uh, scripted and produced. Yeah. Um, so the, it's almost like writing and making points of all the things I like and then combining them together uh, visually. But okay. it's always produced and then multiple people uh, but more recently, I've um, just been using my camera and uh, my iPhone uh, for films as well. Okay. But thank you very much. I'm so happy you uh, noticed all of this about the exhibition. I like yeah. the horizontality. and yeah. the, So it is horizontal because you just kind of just sit there and look at the world and you sit there and look at my films. And yeah. It should be a similar experience. Yeah. No, I like what you say about you, you, you refuse to label it because uh, you, of course, you, you know how it's to be subjected to this type of labeling and, you know, this kind of yeah. uh, very... And also the over explanation because it's actually not about a, a particular situation or a particular history. It's about things and things that people, intelligent people, you have to be semi-intelligent. <laughs> That's the requirement. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I was just thinking, I was just seeing your film, the, uh, I was just saying the one thing that actually gives it away that it is produced and it is probably uh, set up is the camera work. Yeah, totally. All the track shots. How can you do yeah. track shot documentary? I know. <laughs> but still, non filmmakers always ask me. So, you know, I remember the first time I showed it in, uh, in Bangalore, somebody was really annoyed. They thought they'd been. I tricked them massively uh, oh, by, uh, yeah. by pretending it was a documentary reserved and that it wasn't. Oh, so, or like make it a big budget TV documentary on... on yeah, that. exactly. Um, I have a question for Bani about uh, the importance of humor and absurdity. Mm -hmm. um, in relation to the Mangos video and the news reader at the cattle yard. In, in okay. Particular. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, the, yeah, but, so Mangos is my first video that I did in like when I was a child in 1999. Uh, but the uh, and that was really so the Mangos video is just about a Pakistani and Indian. So that's why of course my art kind of played into my life. It's about a Pakistani and Indian eating mangoes and they get competitive. Uh, they kind of really bond, but then the moment they start discussing that which, asking which country produces more varieties, they try and one up each other. 
and there was a trilogy that I did, which is th thinking about uh, about the um, about the banality of borders when geographies and the visceral experiences are what identify us. And I think that kind of because of that was funny. I think everyone else, everything else, retained humor because I understood. Uh, but also I have to say, I must say, because this is a rite of passage, that I must pay homage to the, my most the greatest filmmaker, who is Elia Suleiman, um, who is a Palestinian filmmaker uh, living in, um, in New York, um, whose film never gets accepted at uh, Osc Osc uh, the Oscar, which, which it needn't, because he's not uh, represented by Israel. Uh, but he has done this fabulous film, which I am very inspired by, which my red balloon in my film also references. It's called The Divine Intervention. And it's about conflict um, in West Bank and uh, Jerusalem. But it's w the way he uh, does his films, um, and he formed me a lot in that way, is the darkest of realities represented through absurdity. And absurdity is so dark. And I think that's what, when I, I was reading out Priya's text in the beginning, it is all about the absurdity, the unexplained, um, and how can you represent that? So things have to be open-ended um, um, and left with a kind of a smile on your face. So there's no, no, no attempt at laughter, but there's something about your smile. And also the idea of uh, being able to smile slowly, softly at something is, uh, is a form of agency for the viewer. So I think that agency and laughter is something that's very important to me, especially when you're laughing at power and things that oppress you. Agency and laughter should be the title of either a paper or, or a book because that's just pretty genius. <laughs> wow, Ellie, I'm feeling so good about myself after your validation. This is so cool. <laughs> agency and laughter, I love it. That's why also it was that they died laughing is based on that. Because it's about these, yeah, it's these soldiers who are about to die in the First World War and uh, they are laughing and they, somebody says, if you're about to die, and they said, well, yes. at least we can die laughing. Yes, and so it's I think there is an apprehension towards humor in, in when you're dealing with certain topics or when we're dealing with a realm of, of intellectuality that it seems that the humor doesn't have a space in it, which no. I always found very, very, I mean, I always find very, very absurd myself. I never understood it, you know, you know, going, moving back, moving to the north of Europe, you know, for me was always encountering this kind of, of place where, where humor didn't, didn't have a space in within the realm of, of, of deep thought and, and yeah, these serious matters, which yeah. I never understood and I've still re rejected, but that's what I love when you put agency, you know, especially in the discourses today, you put that word agency that it's incredibly loaded and, and also pretentiously used and you put it in, 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 in interplay with laughter. I mean, that's just... Yeah, yeah um, but of course, I think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, super uh, important and it's, uh, it actually disables the other person. So you, I mean, the, I, I always give the reference of recently, there have been all these women's marches in the past three or four years that have been happening in Pakistan. And now all these young millennial girls have got interested in the women's marches and they have come to the marches with such brilliant humor. Yeah. And they've been happening for many years and there's been women's movements in Pakistan, but now with the new language and jokes that people carry on the placards, there are talk shows, men with beards, without beards, fat men, big men, they're just sitting and going nuts because they can't believe that everyone is cracking up at things that are appointed at them. Um, so I think it's actually, it really shakes people. It's not about that, but of course, unfortunately, laughter like a humorous humor in art and like you say deep thought and culture is always misconstrued or assumed to be populist yes and uh, yeah. which is a, which is really sad but and anyway easy, and easy accessible as you said yourself you have to yeah. be semi-intelligent to actually access certain <laughs> you know yeah Certain materials, so but it's misconstrued as like absolutely accessible to any kind of level which is which yeah is misconstruction yeah no but i love that especially living in berlin and living in germany for so many years <laughs> can you imagine okay. yeah we, we can relate to that so agency and laughter let's make that book happen okay let's do it <laughs> we'll talk separately <laughs> yes we do <laughs> thank you okay thanks uh there is a uh, another question for bani about um your different um the different media you use um one of your media is drawing, and um, the question is, why do you change media? 
why do I change media? Because I did a film for the, so I did painting and sculpture. I started off as an artist doing that. And I did started working with film only after I finished all my education. Uh, then I did film, 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 film. And then it's very exhausting to, uh, to always plan a film, to plan, to get the money, to create the budget, to produce it. And uh, neither did I have the interest in being just able to do daily things. Um, so it is kind of an extension of plan. Uh, do, a lot of my drawings are the same ideas as my films, but they were uh, meant to enable a certain kind of immediacy to uh, my, pra my practice and my thoughts. So a lot of my watercolor drawings are just are linked to other work. Um, and photography I do in the same uh, way. And sometimes I feel when I'm doing a film that I need to extrapolate from the film and have multiple narratives along. So a photograph that speaks to a film. I very often do that. Uh, so I won't settle it just a film. And then I'll have a couple of photographs that are talking to it. Um, um, and I'm not exactly sure where it comes from. I think I just uh, feel I need to flesh it out, but it's always in conversation. But, the, but, but my main thing and interest is film and time and, mu and sound also now, now, more or less. And is this something that you are also um, telling your students now in the class to have this um, more open uh, way of using the media? Um, I think no, because we're doing mostly video. I mean, it's not such a long, uh, long course. So we're trying to just use uh, Insta and uh, like social media, but thinking about cinema in, so in, in, in the kind of social media that exists, which is very hurried and uh, very fast moving. So we're trying to, I showed them really boring, long, 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 long films this morning, just to make them think about living with detail and living with moments and not expecting more all the time and to see if they can play with moments, uh, staging moments um, on video. Okay, great. Well, then I wish you both um, a great time for the rest of the week with your students. Thank you very Thank much you. for sharing uh, your films tonight with us and your thoughts and answering the questions about your way of working. And um, yeah, we, we will you. meet again here yeah. or elsewhere anyway. Um, all the best and have a good um, have a good week creating. Thank you very thank much, you. Bunny and Priya, and everybody who joined tonight. Thank you for thank being you. here. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks a lot.